Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here, and today I've got another interesting knife review slash knife overview to show with you guys. This is the ZT0990, and I gotta admit, I've been wanting to take a look at this for a very long time. We finally have one on the channel. It is available. I will link this right down below um, so you can check the knife out. If you want this specific version, this is the, uh, it's a USA made blade uh, exclusive version with the um, uh, the laser work with the uh, the Sasquatch feet and the Sasquatch logo. So you can check this and other uh, various interesting custom versions of ZT knives and lots of other knives at uh, USA made blade. This was sent to me uh, by Just Here for Gear on Instagram. Let me show you guys his uh, logo right there. There we go, Just Here for Gear on Instagram. Thank you so much for sending this in. I appreciate that. It's because of people like him that I'm able to bring you guys daily and I have content. It's also because of my generous patrons. Thanks so much for supporting me. There's a link for Patreon right down below and please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. Let's go ahead and get a measurement of this guy. So overall length of the ZT0990 is coming in at about seven and a half inches overall. Blade length is coming in at about, I don't know, three point, yeah, it's about 3.3, 3.4. Cutting edge is coming in at three and a quarter. How about some size comparisons? Up against the Ontario Rat Model 1 and Rat Model 2, this is definitely closer to the size of the Rat 2. It kind of has a full-size knife appearance, right? But at seven and a half inches, it just doesn't feel like a, ma I mean, it's still in full-size knife territory, just not quite. Quite as big as some people might think. How about up against the PM2 and Para 3? Shorter than the PM2, a lot closer. In fact, it's only a quarter inch longer than the Spyderco Para 3. Uh, last but not least, the Benchmade Griptilian, or in this case, the Ritter Hogue, and the Benchmade Bugout. Very close. In fact, almost identical. I think it is. The Bugout, seven and a half inches. Uh, overall length uh, to the Benchmade Bugout. It's just got a wildly different profile. How about thickness up against the Spyderco Para 3? can see here, not a super thick knife. I would say at its thickest point, it's still just a little bit thinner than the Spyderco Para 3. Length and height up against the PM2 and Para 3, you can see here that uh, lengthwise, it's really almost no different than the Para 3. Certainly nowhere near as tall as either, and it's, and it's way shorter than the PM2. So yeah, it shouldn't be too bad to carry. Let's go ahead and get a measurement of blade stock thickness here. Uh, blade stock thickness on the 0990 is coming in at, sorry about that, there's a hair on this today, 119, so about 120 thousandths. I'm gonna get rid of that so that that's not in the next upload. And uh, let's take a look at what this is made out of. So a lot of you guys know, a lot of you clicked on the video already knowing this and you just wanted to comment on it, <laughs> that's fine. Uh, yeah, the materials here are CPM 20 CV, which is great, carbon fiber, which is also great, and not titanium, but steel. That's right, all of these parts are steel. Pocket clip, the uh, part of the frame that's got the stop pin mounted, and even this sort of overlay slash frame piece thing right here is also uh, steel. Same with the liner lock. This is based on the 0999, which was a factory custom ZT, long gone, very expensive. All of those parts were titanium. That knife had a lot more work that went into it, and it's kind of more of a collector knife. Yeah, you can use it, but it was more of a collector's knife. So this is like paying on homage to that. Um, but yeah, that's what we're, we're looking at for materials. Uh, there's a lot of milling on this. There's milling all over the place. So it's still, despite the fact that it is steel in combination with carbon fiber and not titanium, the weight still ends up being a little shy of three ounces, at least by the, you know, by my scale, which on this channel means that it's ultra lightweight, anything that's under three ounces. And, you know, even by, you know, other people's standards who are really big into ratios, that's under an ounce an inch, you know? So keep that in mind. The ratios are all still good there. Uh, believe me, we're gonna talk about those steel parts. Uh, hardware check, let's get out my tools. As per usual, my tools are very inexpensive and very recommendable. You can find them right down in the description in the section that talks about my tools. The pivot is going to be a T8. And I can tell you guys right now, I don't even have to check that screw. 
uh, as well as all the body screws and the pocket clip screws, which there are a lot of. <laughs> Those are all going to be uh, T6. I actually say there's a lot of. There's two more than what I prefer to see. So just make sure that you have some quality tools and that you have a place to put your hardware and you should be okay. Okay, let's go ahead and move on here. So this um, is, uh, like I said, absolutely paying homage to the 0999. Um, this is a $220 US made knife, and it is a bummer that these parts are not titanium. I probably should have just gone ahead and said that right at the beginning, right? But that's what, you know, a lot of people are thinking is why weren't they titanium? This part back here, and again, it's like for people wanting to make the argument, well, they did it in the 0999 and it was fine. How many people are taking the 0999 out and using it? Probably not very many. And the people who did probably didn't use it the way they normally would, you know, with a knife. Titanium is strong. It's very corrosion resistant, right? But mainly the reason that it's used on knives, and it depends on the geometric form that it takes and what it's actually doing, right? It's uh, for the balancing properties. You get good strength to weight ratio with titanium. And you can obviously use it as a frame material, right? But when it comes down to a piece like this, it's floating narrow piece, right? Making something like this area right here out of steel over titanium, right? That piece is responsible for holding the stop pin that engages with the tang of the blade during lockout, right? So this, this area back here has a lot of responsibility. Uh, making that out of titanium would create more flex and perhaps a situation where lock fail, perhaps, I don't know this, would be more likely. Considering this is a production version uh, of, of this knife and much more likely to actually be taken out and used, um, I can kind of understand why that piece needed to be steel or why they felt like they needed to do that. Um, a lot of people are going to argue, oh, the titanium would have been just fine if everybody just uses it like a knife. And the problem is, is that not everybody's going to do that. People are going to do silly things with it, right? Uh, zero tolerance, a, a long time ago, uh, there were knives that had uh, some lockup issues, some lock face geometry issues. So I, my, my guess is that they wanted to avoid any potential for that, right? If you still think ZTs are having lockup issues that you're stuck in uh, 2013, 2014, it's been a long time, right? Um, but they, they wanted to avoid that. They wanted to make sure that this is, you know, was going to be a usable knife. Now, for the rest of these materials, right, this area right here, uh, the lock itself, why didn't they just go with titanium? I, I don't understand. I mean, I think making this part back here, it's like, I get it, but the rest of it, you know, the clip could have been something a little more spectacular, a little bit more unique. This is a pretty generic clip, considering this is based on one of the most unique knives in ZT's line, or that they've ever done, right? Would have been really cool to have something special going on with the clip, have it made out of titanium. These parts right here, right, uh, it would have been nice since they don't seem to have anything to do. I think they're totally separate from this area back here. Would have been nice to have these be titanium, maybe a little bit of texturing, and certainly uh, the countersunk uh, lock. It would have been nice to have that as titanium. It would have really felt like the value, even if this thing was $250, right? It would have been, it just would have felt a little bit better. Everything else, right, looks pretty good. The presentation here uh, between the carbon fiber and just the placement of things, there's a lot going on, but they skipped out on um, on on a lot of stuff, right? That's that's just kind of how I feel here, and it really it makes the value here hard to justify, you know, or it makes the the cost really difficult to justify. So go ahead and talk about some functional aspects. So ergonomically, you're definitely cramped. My hands are cramped into this position right here between the flipper tab and the um, the back of the knife, right? It's not a huge knife, but I can still get a four finger grip on it. It's reasonably comfortable. You can kind of feel that pocket clip because of this goose bill thing kind of going on right here, but it's not, it's honestly not really that big of a deal. The part that I feel the most is right here. Since you're gonna, you know, to get four fingers, you're really having to, you know, you really having to fit into this spot and doing that, you know, holding this knife how I would if I was going to use it, that's the part that I'm feeling right there, the jimping and the pokiness of the flipper tab, but it's not really that big of a deal. The rest of it is certainly not an ergonomic mass. I don't think that that was the goal, was to make this hand-melting ergonomic experience, right? It was to create 
a presentation experience, and that's certainly what they achieved here, and then reasonable ergonomics considering how it looks, right? Flipper tab is small, and it's certainly not protruding too much, but it is pointy, and flipping it over and over again, you're definitely gonna start to feel it, right? But it does work. There's no double clutch, but it is a little bit close, right? Disengaging the uh, liner lock, or the countersunk lock bar, is easy thanks to a nice cutout right here that allows for this material to peak up over the show side scale. So yeah, disengagement is fine. Action's okay, smoothness is about what I'd expect. This knife isn't gonna be dropping shut, you know, a couple of shakes right there. The detent's good, and it's nice and snappy. There's no double clutch or anything like that. And I'm not feeling any pivot lash or anything like that. Nice and solid on lockout, so that's fine. Yeah, pretty good. Uh, the pocket clip can be mounted on either the right or left-hand side. So if you're left-handed, you'll have to manipulate a right and just literally just uh, <laughs> carved a piece of dead skin off my thumb there. Be careful, obviously, but you can manipulate this knife pretty easily with your left hand. I am right-handed, so no big deal there. The blade, definitely the coolest part of the knife. Can you engage that hole there and do the reverse flick? I can't, but maybe you will be able to. I think for the most part, it was not, de it, if you can or can't, right, whatever. I, I don't think it was intended as a deployment uh, catalyst. I think it was just meant to look nice. And it does, it, it creates a really unique aesthetic for the blade. You can see there it's carved out and then carved out again. Uh, they, they don't go quite all the way through. Uh, and then the edges of it are pretty nicely rounded down, so it's not sharp at all on the inside there. It does look nice. It's cool. Um, everything on the blade is tumbled. Uh, we have a flat that carries out about, I don't know, 65% or so, the length of the blade. Nice swedge. Uh, comes out to a real pointy tip, and it tapers down to a reasonable edge. It, this isn't going to be a laser beam, but it's good enough at 120 thousandths. Uh, it's plenty thin to begin with, so EDC tasks, it should be just fine. You're not going to be dealing with anything super difficult as far as pushing this blade through material. It's a nice little area to rest your thumb up here. I think it's probably the most comfortable just back here with uh, behind this um, ramp. The front side of the blade doesn't have anything, <clears throat> which is nice. On the back side, we have the in-house uh, designer logo right there. We have 0990, Kai USA, CPM 20 CV, and then the serial number. Something that a lot of people are gonna point out right away is, oh my gosh, the detent hole is completely and totally exposed in the lockout position, which isn't good. Why? Because when you're cutting, right, you can get debris in there. And if you get debris inside of the uh, detent ball hole, then it makes it a little bit more difficult for that ball to sink in the appropriate, uh, to the appropriate depth when the, um, blade is in the closed position and that can technically affect your deployment. The other thing that's weird is that the detent ball path is also exposed when the blade is closed, which can also affect action because that ball will ride on that path as the blade is deploying. So, I mean, many of us have experienced, uh, a lot of people, you know, with knives running on bearings or foster bronze or whatever, if, it, if it's bearings, right, when the action starts to get a little crappy, uh, they immediately think, oh, it's because dirt and debris is inside, you know, messing with the bearings. Sometimes, but oftentimes what's actually happening is that the detent ball path is obstructed by something or there's something on the detent ball or, you know, once you clean that off, it ends up being just fine. Sometimes it is the uh, washers though, but that's kind of, I mean... It's like, what were they going to do with what they're going for for the design here? But I just, you know, that's something to keep in mind. If you're just going to be, if this is just going to be an office carry knife, right? And you're just going to get it out a couple of times a week to open a letter or something. You're just enjoying the presentation of it. Then the worst that you have to worry about as far as interacting with the detent ball hole that's exposed or the detent ball path that's exposed is a little bit of pocket lint, which you can then turn around and access immediately without taking the knife apart because they're exposed. So it's, I guess they're a little easier to clean than some other knives because they're exposed, but they're also more exposed, which means they're going to get dirty more often. I just, I prefer that they weren't exposed. So if you're going to take this knife out and use it in a dusty, dirty environment, you're going to use it outside. You're going to use it a lot. You're probably going to be cleaning those areas off quite a bit. If you notice that something has gone awry with the action, right? That's probably what's at fault there. So there you go. Um, moving on here, you can see there's the stop pin, closed position, and then again in the open position, a little bit of shouldering, so that's nice. Back here on the backspacer, it says zero tolerance. 
I don't know how I feel about that. I kind of wish that it was just a plain backspacer, but it looks, the backspacer looks nice, right? Um, let's see here. Pocket clip. We kind of already talked about that. Plenty deep. Oh no, there's no lanyard hole. Oh no. Uh, yeah. Uh, pocket clips in the right place since we don't have to worry about a lanyard hole. It carries plenty deep. Screws are not recessed, but they don't need to be. And the length of the clip I think is pretty good. It's just, I don't like the little goose bill thing, but it's fine. Uh, it's not really hurting anything. Carbon fiber looks good. Um, I kind of wish that it wasn't flat. I wish that it was contoured, but it, it, it still looks really good. This is nice carbon fiber. ZT has always done a good job, so that's fine. This side right here is much the same as the, as the front. Oh no, there's holes near the pivot so that gunk can get in there. We kind of already talked about that, right? I don't think, as far as like exposure to the internal pivot on a regular folding knife, if it's not running on washers, it's still pretty exposed, right? If it's running on bearings, it doesn't matter if this whole area is covered, dirt and debris is still gonna get in there, right? So it's, it is a little more exposed to these holes right here, I guess, right? But more of the problem area is the exposure of the detent ball hole and detent ball path in my, in my opinion. So I don't really care about these holes right here. It's, I just, I just don't care, right? Um, let's see here. Centering on this guy, I believe is dead on. Yeah, perhaps a little bit off to this side, but that might just be because I wonder if I can like manipulate it and get it. It's pretty darn close. I'm sure this is a used knife, right? So I'm not going to judge it too hard. Had it come to me brand new like that, I'd be like, Neh. but uh, adjusting the pivot and the body screws usually will yield uh, perfect centering, perfect action and perfect lockup. So I'm not going to judge it too hard. Lock out, like I said, plenty good. No blade play up, down, left, or right. I'm happy with that. So, issues with this knife. Uh, it's a real bummer that they decided to go with steel throughout. I can understand doing the, you know, the uh, area responsible for the stop pin, but they decided to go with steel throughout. I think they missed an opportunity to do a unique pocket clip made of a 3D mill pocket clip made out of titanium that went along better with this knife. Uh, detent ball, path, and hole are exposed. That's a huge bummer. The flipper tab is a little pointy over time. You're definitely uh, gonna get annoyed with that. Action is, eh, it's okay, right? Um, but uh, it's cool, it's unique. And this is definitely one of the more unique looking things that ZT has come out with here lately. It's comfortable enough. And here's the thing, guys, remember, it will function. There's nothing here that's going to stop this knife from being a reasonably durable cutting tool. It will work just fine. So if you're wondering, eh, you know, if I buy this, despite the flaws that you're pointing out, is it actually going to last? Or is it... No, it's made plenty well. Fit and finish all the way around is great. I'm sure the centering will come perfectly centered with some minor adjustments. I wouldn't worry too much about that. ZT is pretty good with their centering. Um, but 220 bucks. Honestly, I'd rather them make some adjustments on this knife. Just yeah, do some more titanium, something special with a pocket clip, maybe a little bit more, uh, you know, a little more sauce with the titanium parts and charge me like 250. Uh, rather than be like, well, for steel, it should be 170. We just don't want that. We don't want a, a knife with an X, like the blade is steel. We obviously we want that, right? But I don't want a ZT knife with excess steel parts. I just don't want it. It's not even a matter of like, what should the price be? It's, listen, if you had to use steel back here, okay. But the rest of this should be tight. That's just what, that's, that's what buyers expect. That's what people buying ZT knives expect, especially the people who are, I mean, if you're going to design this this knife, paying homage to a knife that only knife enthusiasts are going to know about, right? The, the 0999, those are the same types of people who don't want steel on a knife. As, as far as the frame goes, they don't want steel parts, right? If they're going to pay 220 to $250 for a knife, they want something a little, they want more. So I'd say charge us more and do something a little more interesting with the materials and the form that the materials take. It's a US made knife. It's obviously going to be expensive, right? Um, but I don't, I don't want to sit here and be like, it should be less for the material. We just, this is what we expect from zero tolerance between 200 and $300 is 20 CV, carbon fiber, and titanium. And for them to make, you know, for it to uh, basically take a very interesting form. That's, that's what people want to see. So, 
I know people will still buy this. I know people will still pick it up. If you can overlook the things that I was talking about here that bother me, then yeah, go ahead. I think you'll be plenty happy with it. But for the vast majority of people watching, if you're considering spending $220 to $250 on a knife, there's some heavy competition out there. And this is far from the first thing that I'm going to recommend. It is still really cool though. I mean, it's still something that I'm like, yeah, I wanted to get my hands on it and look at it, right? And I'm glad to say that it does function the way I expect a nice ZT knife to function. This will be going in my ZT knives playlist. So you can check out everything that I have uh, ever talked about on this channel that has to do with ZT. Thanks again to Nate for sending this in. Did I say that right? Did I, is it Nate? Yeah, Nate. Thank you very much, Nate, for sending this in. I really appreciate that. Uh, please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do of course have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that metal complex. I'll go right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.